As NASA astronauts Joe Kerwin and Bruce McCandless donned their spacesuits and went through checkout procedures, they were not preparing for a spacewalk, at least not in the truest sense. Okay, Bruce. Yep. Two, clear. They were, in fact, preparing to step off into a tank 40 feet high by 75 feet in diameter, filled to the top with one and a quarter million gallons of water. Cooling is fine. Okay. Have you created neutralized? Okay, go ahead, neutralize. The huge tank is operated by NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and is called the Neutral Buoyancy Simulator. It's designed to simulate weightlessness by using the buoyant effect of water. Lead weights are added to the astronauts' spacesuits until they become neutrally buoyant, where they neither sink nor float in the water. This is as close as you can come on Earth to duplicating the weightless environment of space for long periods of time. It allows engineers to develop procedures and hardware that will be needed when astronauts actually work outside their spaceships in space. Watch as astronauts Kerwin and McCandless attempt to assemble some large structures. Okay, we don't have any bad columns. We've got adjustable columns. <laughs> the engineers monitoring the tests are trying to determine how well suited astronauts in orbit can handle such large items. That's a right hand. That's a right hand? Right. Okay. With this column, I'm going to swing it around to Scott by the time he gets ready for it. Okay, just Working out of a mock-up of the Space Shuttle Orbiter's 60 by 15 foot cargo bay, the two astronauts connected tubular columns into a structure with many sides and a variety of angles. The test is one of several large structure assembly problems that help engineers forecast how productive a space worker will be in assembling such structures in space in the future. After about two and a half hours underwater, astronauts Kerwin and McCandless completed putting the structure together and surfaced. We asked Joe Kerwin, veteran of a 28-day Skylab space flight, what he thought about the system. Where I had difficulty was where the there wasn't, you know, quite a wide enough envelope for me to, to do the insertion where it had to be exactly lined up where it wouldn't go in. It's nice to have a sloppy system so you can insert it and then have something that locks it down accurately. But given that, I think it's going to work great. I thought the, the At the debriefing, the two astronauts talked extensively about problems they had putting the structure together and suggested possible solutions. Raising it up, but then moment. trying to get it lined up and it's dropping and it's dropping and if you miss it, you got to go do it all over again. The help or speed things up is if you had these things arranged in, in magazines of, you know, let's say nine or, or so. It probably is possible, and NASA hadn't designed any yet, but it's probably possible to have a, a foot restraint or a leg restraint or a lower waist restraint that is in position, rigidly attached to the suit. The interplay between the engineers and designers of the equipment and the astronauts who may someday use it went on for more than an hour. The neutral buoyancy simulator, learning to build underwater. Practice now for future construction in space. And go ahead and make those connections.